Welcome into TYT's The Conversation. It is your host, Adrian Lawrence. Thank you so much for joining us. As we know, things are popping off down there, what, a little south of the equator? Yeah, in terms of Brazil. And fortunately, I have Calvin Dark, who's the Democratic strategist and global affairs commentator, also analyst, and also a principal and co founder of RC Communications. Thanks for joining us, Calvin. Good to be here. All right, so we know thousands of supporters of Brazil's former president, Jair Bolsonaro, broke into the country's congressional building last week and the Supreme Court presidential palace. A lot of those individuals were arrested. And there's so many questions right now with how things are going to proceed in the country, given that it seems to be very divided in terms of people who are ready to move on from Bolsonaro and those who are not. So can you give us an update? Yes, you know, especially happening um, right near the two year anniversary of January 6th um, in the United States. Uh, Americans, as we watch this, is kind of like, you know, PTSD seeing this happen. You know, a lot of the same strategies, um, uh, same goals uh, were used by the Brazilian protesters that we saw in our own capital on January the 6th. I think um, what's important now is as things have calmed down a bit, People are rightfully trying to figure out who's responsible. And that goes from the people who actually protested to potentially um, uh, former President Bolsonaro, who has been in Orlando since um, uh, he left office. So a lot remains or a lot remains to be seen. A lot of people in the US, including several members of Congress, are asking that his visa not be renewed. Um, that, like I said, depends on what happens with the uh, Brazilian Supreme Court as they are now allowed the federal prosecutors to investigate Bolsonaro to see if he could be charged potentially with inciting or fomenting um, what we saw there. Indeed, as we learned at the close of last week, that the Brazilian Supreme Court, as you've noted, now they're approving including that ex-president Bolsonaro in this incitement probe in terms of the January 8th riot in Brasilia. And I know that that, as you noted, gives a lot of people here in the United States, um, you know, this PTSD in terms of January 6th. And then having Bolsonaro here in Florida, it almost seems like are we being a safe haven toward individuals who are trying to stage a coup to overturn our government? What, like, what is the response here in terms of the Biden administration? Well, I think the Biden administration, they kind of have their hands tied at least now. Because, you know, what regardless of what people think um, uh, Bolsonaro's culpability with what happened, you know, there's there's precedent for allowing uh, former heads of state. He was actually a current head of state when he got to Florida. He skipped out on the inauguration, so I think he had a day or two left in his term. Um, they got to be very careful because you know we don't want that same thing to happen to current and former presidents of the United States when they're traveling. If there isn't you know an extradition order or where he hasn't been charged with the crime. So I'm sure that the Biden administration you know, is considering that, but their, their hands are kind of tied. I do wanna give credit to the Biden administration for doing what I think was the most important thing after this happened. And that was quickly and unambiguously denouncing it. That went a long way. For because you know these kind of things get fomented in ambiguity when people are saying, well, are they protesting because they don't like Lula da Silva, or they they weren't sure if the election was fraudulent or not? You don't do that in a democracy here or in Brazil. And Joe Biden's statement right after it happened really, really was effective at conveying that. Absolutely, I remember when da Silva took the win uh, that Biden, also Trudeau and Canada and a number of other foreign leaders made sure that they recognized and honored uh, in terms of making phone calls and making sure it was very publicly voiced because there seems to be on an international level this push um, for fascist regimes. And a number of them have seemed to come through in terms of being elected. And then there are others who are staging coups, uh, whether it is a particular leader or even just um, kind of sectors of their governments. But I also wanna bring up the fact that what I think they call Bolsonaro the Trump of the tropics, this kind of alignment between the similarity between both Trump and Bolsonaro. Uh, what are people seeing there in terms of um, kind of just maybe the, the fraction between the two men? 
Well, you know, when all of this happened and I found out that Bolsonaro was in Florida, I thought maybe he was gonna be working on the 2024 campaign for um, uh, former President Donald Trump because they are uh, two peas in a pod. Now, granted, they have different backgrounds. You know, Bolsonaro had a lot more government military exp experience before he became president, but a lot of the same um, uh, policies or or ways of expressing those policies were similar between Bolsonaro and Trump. What's definitely clear is this election denial, even down to blaming a bug in the voting machines in Brazil. And you know, one of the things I've just been really thinking a lot about since this happened was, you know, former President Donald Trump did not invent coups. You know, he did, did not invent attempts to overturn democracy. However, what he did do, um, the attempts at doing that, he gave the biggest platform for democracy there is, the United States, for the for what happened on January the 6th. And it's very clear that people were watching and that some people took that as a license to you know, try the home game. And I think that is one of the things that the United States has to realize. What we do, the world is watching. And I think that it's clear to see that a lot of the, the strategies and objectives and just what unfolded um, was patterned after January the 6th here in our country. Absolutely, I couldn't agree more in terms of um, seeing these copycats going on internationally, whether it's the group that tried to uh, stage a coup in Germany or a number of the other countries going on right now and also the uplifting and uprising in this fascist movement. It's very scary and disconcerting. And I also know that it's kind of a question of Bolsonaro in terms of his longevity, um, especially given that he didn't seem to challenge De Silva's win as uh, expeditiously as he could have. Uh, do you think that that's signaling to us that he may be uh, in a position where he's ready to move on? Well, it, it could be he's ready to move on or it could be that he's planning a future political move. I will say that one of the things that was markedly different, um, and I wondered this when I saw the protest, is you know if we look at what happened on January the 6th, former President Trump was still President Trump. You know, these protests happened after um, Lula da Silva had been sworn in. So, you know, I, I, I kind of wonder what the objective was. Although one of the um, uh, Bolsonaro former officials that the Supreme Court also included in their order, um, I think they searched his home and they found a draft decree to um, you know, cancel some of the millions of the votes that would have basically reminded me of Georgia. They had, you know, this we need this many votes discounted so that we can win. And I think that's a it's a very serious, and if Bolsonaro had any hands in that. And is planning a political comeback. It could be very dangerous for um, a huge economic partner um, with the US and a huge player in the Western Hemisphere. I find it to be very uh, entertaining with the thought that Bolsonaro's people were um, documenting and writing down how they would stage a coup. I can just picture them with like their little trapper keepers and their little pens and writing down, we're gonna do this and then this. It just almost seems very foolish. Um, but in terms of actually punishing them, I would like to hope that Brazil has a better track record of holding officials accountable than the US does. What are your thoughts? Well, one of the things, you know, it remains to be seen exactly how justice will be handled in this situation. But as I was looking at some of the statements, you know, reading some of the orders from the judiciary in Brazil, it seems that they give a lot more weight to inciting. For example, with Bolsonaro, one of the things that he had um, that he had done that people wanted to charge him with or say that he was part of the protesters was a video that he posted about you know how the election was stolen and how Lula da Silva was actually you know elected or put in power by the Supreme Court. Now he didn't post that until two days after, you know, so it's kind of hard to say that that inspired people. But what I've heard, what I've seen from the Brazilian authorities is they're saying that was a continuation of this incitement of anti-democracy. And you know, that's some of the same things that we kind of dealt with. So it'll, it remains to be seen if they'll follow through with that. But I think it is good that their kind of bar for supporting democracy is a lot higher than ours is sometimes. Yeah, that, that indeed seems to be the case. And I really hope that is the case. And I know we just have a few minutes left, but since we're talking Brazil and we're also talking about infirmities and shortcomings of our democracy, let's talk about George Santos. I know he is uh, facing kind of simple fraud charges 
down there in Brazil. And I know it's very unlikely that he would be extradited unless Brazil got very aggressive in seeking that extradition. But what are your thoughts as someone who has that expertise there? Well, you know, I think it's interesting that we, uh, two of the biggest stories of politicians living in the United States have to do with can we or should we get them back to Brazil? Um, I think that what's happening with George Santos, it's 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 now become kind of like the Anna Delvey uh, situation of 2023. I'm really looking to see what the Republicans are going to do. Because like I said, this is unprecedented, but it has so um, so many um, aspects. You have the international, what's going on with Brazil, also what he did here. Uh, I'm, I'm sitting back and watching. I just hate that the constituents who voted for him have to have him as a representative until we figure all of this out. Absolutely, but I sure hope that the parameters and things that go into place in terms of vetting people gets a lot stronger and people learn from this situation so we don't have to repeat it. But I know there's also people out there who would love to follow you on social media and also to learn more from your insight. And can you please tell us where they can go? On Twitter, I'm Tails Darkside or all the rest of my social media links are at calvindark.com. Fantastic, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate your time. That is Calvin Dark, Democratic strategist.